Good afternoon and thank you for joining us here on THV 11 News at noon. Right now, Little Rock police are updating the public on yesterday's deadly shooting spree. You can see the mayor at the podium right now. We will send it over to Mayor Frank Scott Jr. for that update. Even when we have issues like this uh, that no one can predict, uh, this is something that doesn't usually happen, uh, but we have to always prepare for the unexpected. Uh, today we stand here at approximately 52 homicides in the city of Little Rock. I grieve each and every murder uh, that happens in this city. Uh, with sleepless nights, understanding that victims have been shaken, victims have been changed for the remainder of their life, their families, and this is something that we do not take lightly, and this is the reason why we put all our effort and resources towards the men and women of Little Rock Police Department to ensure they have the resources that they need. That is also the reason why we understand it's a dual approach. It's proactive policing, it's targeted patrols, but it's also a long-term impact on what we do with the social programs that we have been investing in for quite some time, but actually increased over the past year. Uh, while we've seen homicides continue to rise, we've seen overall violent crime decline. And that's the reason why this dual approach of both proactive policing as well as this long-term holistic approach. But there are times like this past weekend uh, that's just, again, it's unexpected. But when you have a series of unexpected events, it takes communication, collaboration, and a collective effort. And that's what happened this past weekend. I'm grateful for the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department, the Placid County Sheriff's Office, as well as the Arkansas State Police. And I want to thank each, each one of them, particularly Chief Buley, as well as Sheriff Eric Higgins and his team. We know uh, Lieutenant Cody Burke is here with us today, and Colonel Bryant. And so we're very grateful for each of you and all the work that you continue to do as we work collectively together. Again, this is about a united front on how we address a series of unexpected events, but also want to assure uh, the public uh, that we are focused on this effort to continue to get individuals off the streets, particularly as it relates to gun violence uh, in our cities. And that's the reason why we're here today. We want to give this update. Chief Buley will be with us here shortly. Again, uh, to the families, we want to take this time for a brief moment of silence. We take this moment of silence to honor their lives. We take this moment of silence to assure them that we are continuing the work. And so while we're here today to discuss this past weekend, we're also here today to continue to show and demonstrate the things that we're doing moving forward. Whether it's the investment in our real-time crime center that will go online, later this month that will put additional eyes on the streets. Where there's continu continuing our recruitment efforts, we're excited that we've increased our bonuses for new officers from $5,000 to $10,000. We're excited about the work we've done with the Office of Neighborhood Safety. We're excited about the mental health and social workers that have been placed to ensure that our officers are not responding to things that are not needed for them to respond to. And again, that is the reason why we've seen this violent crime decrease. However, uh, you have to always be prepared for the unexpected like a yesterday. And because of that preparation, we were able to take care of the business needed to get that individual off the streets quick, fast, in a hurry. Again, it's unacceptable, and there's more work to do, and we'll continue that work. Chief Buley. Thank you, Mayor. I am Wayne Buley, Assistant Chief of uh, Police for the Little Rock Police Department. Uh, as you know, I'm currently serving as the interim chief as our city uh, continues to undergo the process, a national search for our next police chief. Today, I want to provide an update on, a, as the mayor said, on a series of shootings that occurred over the weekend in our city, in Pulaski County, as well as on the interstate system here within the city of Little Rock. Uh, due to the number of the incidents, the locations, uh, this required and involved a significant response from the Little Rock Police Department, the Arkansas State Police, as well as the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office. Early yesterday afternoon, uh, myself and Colonel Bill Bryant with the Arkansas State Police uh, had several phone calls uh, trying to get updates, try to determine exactly what we knew, uh, what was occurring, and together uh, a decision was made to initiate our unified command, which the purpose of the unified command is uh, particularly in a, in a situation like this, is to bring the different individual agencies that are involved, uh, the leaders of those agencies together into a room where as information and intelligence is being gathered across the different agencies, uh, we can share that information in real time 
uh, to provide a, an adequate, timely response. So uh, with that, today, I'd like to publicly say uh, thank you to Colonel Bill Bryant, the Arkansas State Police, uh, Sheriff Eric Higgins with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office who couldn't be here this morning, but we've been in phone contact. Uh, Lieutenant Cody Burke is here uh, in his place. Uh, so I appreciate that partnership, and it is those type of relationships that uh, makes things happen when we have a situation that occurred like it did uh, uh, on yesterday. I'm gonna go through all of the events. Some of these are ours with the Little Rock Police Department. Some are the Arkansas State Police, and some are also Pulaski County Sheriff's Office. But just to keep us from going back and forth on the initial chronological order, I'm gonna go through these. I wanna point out that we're not by any means saying that all of these are connected but they are close enough and we're considering uh, the fact that there's a potential for that. So I'm gonna list all of these and then I'll highlight the ones that we actually have, have made arrest in at the end. The first incident I'm gonna talk about occurred on Saturday, August 13th, 2022 at approximately 1.37 p.m. Little Rock police officers were dispatched to 9401 Mableville cutoff. In this particular incident, we uh, made contact with an individual who de described two cars shooting at each other and in the process of that, her vehicle was struck, she was not injured. We also determined that Mableville Elementary was struck approximately four times uh, by gunfire as well. At the time of the shooting, there were four uh, people in the school, all adults, no children were present and there were no injuries reported in this incident. The second incident occurred on Saturday, August 13th, 2022, at approximately 1.53 p.m., deputies from the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to a shooting at 4022 Fraser Pike. In this incident, there were two individuals in a vehicle. The vehicle was struck by gunfire. One of the individuals in that uh, vehicle was struck in the arm. The next incident, Saturday, August 13th, at approximately 7.20 p.m., Little Rock police officers were dispatched South Rodney Parham uh, to a shooting just occurred. Our officers located one victim who was identified as Glenn Finley, 713 of 1999. Mr. Finley was pronounced deceased at the scene. The next incident uh, is the first one that occurred yesterday on Sunday, August the 14th. It occurred at approximately 12.58 p.m. Uh, deputies with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to a shooting at Fraser Pike at 3 a.m. Deputies located Dwayne Thompson, uh, male, 58 years of age. Uh, Mr. Thompson was transported to a local hospital where he was pronounced deceased at the hospital. The next two incidents uh, belong to the Arkansas State Police. The first one occurred Sunday, August 14th at approximately 2.43 p.m. Uh, troopers with the Arkansas State Police dispatched to Interstate 30 eastbound at 65th Street to a shooting. In this incident, a victim's car uh, was struck multiple times by gunfire and the victim was also struck by gunfire. That victim was transported to UAMS. The next incident, Sunday, August 14th, yesterday, 2022, it was reported at approximately 3.13 p.m., but this particular incident, the victim, it occurred at I-440 in Bankhead. The victim actually drove to a residence, made the report at a later point. So it was a delayed reporting. Uh, the car, similar situation, one victim, car struck multiple times by gunfire, and the victim was also struck. Uh, that victim was transported to St. Vincent's Hospital. Then yesterday, August 14th, 2022, starting at approximately 3 p.m., we had a number of incidents, approximately seven, where an individual in a vehicle driving fired shots at other individuals that were in their vehicles who were also driving. Uh, all of our victims from Little Rock Police Department describe the suspect uh, in these shootings as a, a black male driving a gray or a green Mercedes, BMW, Infinity, or a luxury type vehicle. Um, there was one additional incident where an unoccupied car was struck uh, out on uh, Chanel, uh, I'm sorry, Shadow Lake Apartments at 1311 West Markham, and then Arkansas State Police had two additional incidents where cars were struck on the interstate. The locations of these were 5600 block of West Markham, Chanel Parkway in Autumn, a second incident at Chanel in Autumn, 
Markham and Bowman, 12,801 Chennault Parkway. Arkansas State Police had two. One was on I-630 in Shackelford. Um, another one was on uh, I-630 between Rodney Parham and Barrow. In all of these incidents, we had vehicles that were shot, struck by gunfire, but none of the individuals in the vehicles were, were injured. The one I mentioned earlier, Shadow Lake Apartments, 13111 1 West Markham, was an unoccupied vehicle that was shot by an individual that was also out of the vehicle, and that suspect was described as a black male wearing a white shirt. The last incident I'm gonna cover occurred yesterday, Sunday, August 14th, at approximately 5.14 p.m. Little Rock police officers were dispatched to a shooting inside the Valero at 6500 Maple Bell Cutoff. Officers on the scene located two victims inside the store, uh, both suffering from gunshot wounds. One victim pronounced deceased at the scene. A second victim was transported to the hospital in critical condition. And as of uh, this morning's briefing, that's been upgraded to stable. I cannot release the name of that victim yet at this point. We're waiting on positive identification for the homicide. The second victim was uh, an Alexis Oliver, uh, born 319 of 1976. And again, his condition has been uh, upgraded to uh, stable uh, as of just prior to this press conference. As a result of this homicide, our uh, officers working the scene, detectives, were able to, from surveillance video from the business, put out a, a bolo to the area agencies that uh, showed both the, the, the vehicle description and an identified uh, clothing description of the suspect, which was a black male wearing a white shirt and red Nike shorts. A short time after our bolo was put out, a trooper with the Arkansas State Police located the vehicle, and after a brief pursuit, uh, two individuals were taken into custody at about 5.51 p.m. Uh, yesterday at Roosevelt and State Streets. Both were transported to our 12th Street Station to our major crimes divisions. Uh, and at this point, I can tell you uh, that Mr. Uh, Davis Jones, black male, 210 of 1991, I believe we have a picture to put up uh, for him. Um, he has been charged with capital murder, criminal attempt to commit capital murder. Those are both related to the Valero at 6500 Mapleville cutoff. He was also charged with uh, possession of firearm by certain persons. He was charged with battery second degree, which has to do with a uh, assault on a MIMS personnel that was providing medical treatment. He was also charged in one of the incidents that I highlighted with the vehicles being shot that occurred at Markham and Bowman. In that case, he was charged with two counts of terroristic act, as well as unlawful, unlawful discharge of a firearm. The second individual that was taken into custody, uh, we're not gonna identify him yet, it's still part ongoing investigation, but that individual was released without charges. So I, I know that was a lot, but, but a lot occurred. And uh, I, I wanna point out that none of this, are we saying we're confirming is connected, but it is based on the circumstances we thought relative to highlight. Uh, our detectives, as well as uh, members of the Arkansas State Police, Pulaski County Sheriff's Office will continue uh, to collectively share information and continue to work these as, as the evidence piles up. And, and if we are able to confirm or verify any additional at a later point, we will come back before you and confirm that at that time. And you have just been listening to that press conference, a joint press conference between Arkansas State Police, the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office and Little Rock Police, as well as Arkansas State Police, as we mentioned too. just a couple of details there. Again, you saw the suspect on your screen just a few minutes ago. He has been arrested and charged with capital murder. That is 31 year old Davis Jones. Again, that update from Little Rock Police. There has been a second suspect that was that person was not named as of yet, but they were taken into custody, questioned and then released. But there is a second suspect and again all of these shootings not confirmed connected but Little Rock Police and Arkansas State Police releasing that timeline from these string of shootings again 11 shootings reported on Saturday and Sunday over the weekend of course we're going to take all this information have much more coming up tonight at 5 and 6 and of course we'll have another update if one is provided here on THV 11 news at noon and remember you can receive all this information as it becomes available on THV 11.com we'll be right back